Hello and welcome back to episode number four of season three of Japan Business Time, the joy of Japanese business. Here once again with Rochelle Kopp. And uh, today we have a subject, great subject today, actually from Ahmed Bolta, regular commenter, uh, asking uh, how to navigate the Japanese world of senpais and kohais, about the, the hierarchical yes. relationships. Yes, very important part of Japanese business. Fundamental and fascinating and real great topic. Great yes. topic. So join Thank us. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Ahmed. Well, hang around. We're going to talk about this in a minute. So let's start from the basics, senpais and kohais. Yes. Okay, so in any Japanese organization, you have people of different ranks. And anyone who is more senior to you, usually older than you or has been in the organization longer, mm. is your senpai. Right. Anyone who is younger than you or has had a shorter tenure in the organization is your kohai. Right. The only people who aren't your senpai or kohai are the doki, yeah. and they're the people who entered at the exact same time as you. And it's the exact same time. I mean, well, I'm just thinking, you could have someone who joined, someone who joined like uh, three months uh, before you. That's a bit weird. They wouldn't exactly be your senpai necessarily. But they're definitely not your doki. Your doki are the people who join yeah, on the exactly same intake. Same time, right, exactly. You know, you went through all the new training and all the the, the acclimatization together right, right. through boot camp. They're basically you're, you're basically boot camp survivors. Right. Exactly. Uh, but yes, so it's basically in my experience, it's actually it is more to do with timing of when you come in the company. Although that said, there are laterals now, and that's becoming more common. So I think age probably is a is a big factor now that I think about it. So okay, so. This happens everywhere, of course. There are more senior people and junior people right, right. in any country, in any, in any culture. So what's the big deal? Okay, well, I think the, the big deal in Japanese culture is that you actually have to know what your hierarchical relationship is with anyone yeah. in order to literally be able to talk to them. Yes. Because you have to change your verb endings and you have to change a lot of other words, depending on how polite you're being based on whether they're more senior or whether they're junior. And so you, your entire way of relating to people is completely determined by that. And just to be to elaborate on this a little bit as well, uh, if anyone who speaks Japanese, you'll have, you'll have an idea of this, about how Japanese has polite language and uh, sort of regular language. A and then at the extreme, there's the extra polite language and there's the extra humble language. Right. Um, this is, uh, Japanese is a spoken language, is a pretty simple language, grammatically pronunciation. Th this is the most difficult aspect of the language, um, and it's kind of, it's just because it's unique. It's hard right. to grasp because some of these concepts <coughs> don't exist in mm -hmm. other languages. Right, and I think it's hard for, at least for American mm. English speakers, we don't vary so much based yeah. on hierarchy, and yeah. so it's an extra layer of things that you have to do when you're speaking Japanese. And it's very hard. Yeah, and yeah, and, and, and it's the, and this ties into so many things. I love this so much. I mean, your position, who's your senpai and who's your kohai and the language that you speak is completely fluid. As people leave and enter the room, you know, uh, you are literally defined by the room that you are in. You know, you can move from It's all from situational. One it's completely situational. And what that means is, and if you make a mistake, you're dead. Gaijins <laughs> uh, will get a pass to a certain extent, but if you're teaching, if you're speaking tamikichi, like, uh, ara, ara, you'll get taken aside, probably. They'll tell mm -hmm. you at least go to polite language, even if right. you don't go into full keigo. Well, I actually have a funny story about this. This is oh. about someone who worked at the bank I worked at in yeah. Japan. Yeah. And so she was, um, she had joined about the same time I had. So she was an American and she also spoke Japanese. Yeah. However, her Japanese is very different than mine. Yeah. Now, I had always, whenever I'd been in Japan, had been in business situations. Even in college, I had an internship at a savings and loan. Right. And so I spoke always really polite Japanese. Right. And that's you know, kind of what I learned and what I always used. And I couldn't really switch to informal very easily at that right. point. Because I think especially when you're first learning language, you kind of get stuck at one level. That's right. Well, she had had the opposite experience. Exchange. She had spent exchange student. She worked at a sushi bar. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she spoke sushi barmaid Japanese. Bit, better than ramen, yeah, but yes. <laughs> it, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty down and dirty. Okay, yeah. And so here we were. We were at this really conservative bank. Yeah. And what's very interesting is actually, if you talk to us in English, we yeah. had fairly similar personalities. 
but we came across so differently in Japanese. Yeah. And there were Rochelle fans who thought that I was like so you know a pro- proper and appropriate, yeah. and that the way she talked was really scandalous. Yeah. And there were people who thought she was a hoot and thought I was boring. And so the yeah. reaction to us is completely determined by how much you know how much Kago we were using. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and this is actually, so this is a problem. Because Keigo is kind of alien, frankly, to language and, and most Western sort of languages. Right. And Japanese will always come and ask you, by the way, uh, what should I say for good business English? Because they assume that there's a Keigo in English. Yes, exactly. And you always have to say, just say it really clearly. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, there's it doesn't there's, really matter that much, yeah. Right. But, but at the same time, particularly people who come on exchange, we tend to just lock into one. And the thing is, when you study Japanese, I know this is very frustrating to anyone who learns Japanese, that they teach in Tainego primarily. Yeah. Um, the problem is Tainego isn't dictionary form, so you can't look up a dictionary based on Tainego. Uh, and, and when these people who learn Tainego for all these years, and then they come to Japan on exchange, and all their friends at school are speaking casual Japanese, and they feel like they've been deceived all these years. Well, I it's felt hard that. to understand. I know it for, for me initially, I, I couldn't understand people yeah. very well. Yeah. So they learn from their friends this cool Japanese, and they get very fluent. But then they just lock into that cool Japanese, which they all, is all they have to speak when they're at school. Right. And this and is, it, even Japanese have this problem, by the way, as well. Yeah, they when do, they come actually. out of university, Japanese struggle with Keigo as much as... In fact, I know foreigners who study Keigo, and they actually cope better than some Japanese. Right, right, out. exactly. Well, actually, a big issue that I get... And I've, I've actually been thinking of... Yeah. actually making this a course that our company offers yeah. but we get a lot of japanese who come and they go to university in the united states yeah so their japanese has kind of stopped at high school oh, yeah, they yeah. go to university of the united states then they get hired by a japanese company's u.s operations yeah and then they're they, they never learn you know all the things you get in in you know new employee training and they don't learn how to do keigo yeah and then all the japanese who are coming over as expatriates or the people they deal with at head office or their customers yeah are horrified by how they're speaking and it, yeah. it's it's a huge problem actually and they come across as at best bad mannered you know at yes. worst they come across as arrogant and up themselves and the mikey i mean that's what it sounds yeah, it's, like yeah it's, it's just it's just inappropriate yeah. inappropriate so i've actually i've been thinking we need to have a kegel class that we offer in the u.s there would be a demand for it i just haven't oh, gotten yeah. around for it to it Kegel is a huge aspect of this, and Kegel, because it defines the relationship, but it doesn't just define the relationships and the language, it defines the behavior. Right. And more importantly, there's a certain set of expectations around the relationship. When you have someone, especially on your reporting line who you work with, not just someone out mm-hmm. there in the company, but when you've got someone in a team, um, when you are the senpai, it's unusual for foreigners to get into a real senpai position. Mm-hmm. Um, but part of getting into that position is you have to act like a senpai. Right. And if you don't act like a senpai, then you're going to be the foreigner. Right. And so you have to be really grooming and mentoring the people below you if you're the senpai. Yeah. And same and same thing being a kohai as well. There, there, there are these expectations about what senpais are supposed to do yeah. and what kohais are supposed to do. And that relationship, frankly, it's, it's really hard for foreigners to get into because those relationships are defined back in elementary school. Right. Um, the, the, the kids, it's a wonderful aspect of school that I'm learning with my son now going into uh, elementary school from two days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but already, for, even from kindergarten, actually, the third years look after the second years. They help them put their clothes on. They help them, you know, if they're doing homework and they're stuck, they, they, they make the kids help each other. Mm. And, you know, the, the kids have to clean up. They have to cook the school meals. Right. They have to do all this stuff. And, it's, and, and they do it with their senpais who are there to supervise them, but, but also to, to help them. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of that, some people interpret that as being a framework for allowing bullying, which in negative in a negative context it can become, but that's far and away the the, the exception. It's not the rule mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, the the but the, the thing is to be a senpai just because you have a subordinate, um, that person might first think, oh cool, I've got a Japanese, uh, I've got a, I've got a foreign senpai, but if you don't act like a senpai, and being a senpai is a real pain. It's a lot of work. You have to be it's a, a mother. Responsibility. You basically have to be a mother for them. Right. Yeah. Um, and when you don't act like that, or there's two things that can go wrong. One, if you don't talk to them like you're a senpai and they're a kohai, which I hate doing because I, it, it's a downward way of talking that I, I still find yeah. culturally difficult to do. But then they won't see you because you're, you're using language to define the relationship as, oh, you're not a real senpai. Mm. And then they won't take you seriously. So that's the, the language is one thing. And yeah, it just affects the perception of what, so when you give an instruction right, or something yeah. like that. But to be a senpai and to be a kohai, and so if you're a if, so if you're a kohai if you're joining a Japanese company and you've got a Japanese boss, what sort of things do kohais have to do? For oh, the just anything you possibly can to be helpful 
and make things easier for them. And that's carrying their bag and then yeah. all those sort of things, right? Someone comes to the office, you don't get told. You just go and get the coffee ready. Uh, if you're going to a meeting, you go and print out all the copies of the handouts. Right. Uh, you're thinking ahead and anticipating what might be useful and just going and doing it. Yeah. Um, you, you're Daniel's son, basically, from, from Karate Kid. <laughs> you know, and, and, and this is the thing. You'll be, you'll be made to do a lot of sort of media work, which will have some, uh, but we'll have some sort of training and building up sort of mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. But the goal, of a, the goal of a kohai is to learn to read the air around their, uh, their senpai and to, right, you know, yeah. And the job of the senpai is, frankly, to develop, not just to train them, but to, to develop their character a little bit as well. Um, I find this a big thing that they want to teach you how to think for yourself. I got very frustrated when I first got to Japan that whenever I was stuck on something, I would go to my senpai who knew the answer and I'd say, how do I do this? Right. And I'd always get these damn karate kid answers of, you should go, go have a look through that. Spend six more hours and come come back and tell me what you found. Like, Just tell me. I'm gonna. This is a huge waste. Of time. I want to go home. I've got a date tonight. I'm never gonna get out in time. He's like, no, you figure it out yourself. Mm. Uh, this drives Japanese people nuts as well. By the way, it's not just foreigners. <laughs> uh, but there is that kind of they're the harsh. They're, it's tough love. Um, but Japanese. And they call it that. They say tough love. Yeah. Do they say tough love? They I've they never do, heard yeah. that one. But I think people accept it because they they're conditioned to accept it from such a young age, and it's really hard to slot in to Japanese companies to do that mm-hmm. um, but yeah if you if you want to be a real senpai uh, I think you have to accept that Jap- junior Japanese will need to be probably frankly I'd say mothered they need to be looked after more mm-hmm. maybe than you would expect with a foreign subordinate so overseas mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, and when you're a foreigner you're going to have to expect to put up with um, and, 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 and but again it's not all negative because what I think of yeah. it, it's a great training system oh. and also everyone has their role to play and it's very well orchestrated in that sense and the, the upside of it is this my first job in japan i i just had a nightmare adapt, adapting at first i this i i had a particularly tough senpai who i was so relieved to learn when he got a new core high and i moved to another team he beat up on the new senpai as much as he beat up on me and i was like yes but as tough as he was and he was really tough um there was a time when i was having a dispute with hr over my apartment and guarantor and this sort of stuff and it meant that I'd have to commute from a long way away if I couldn't get this apartment. And when I was really sort of cornered and in a really bad spot, this guy turned all of his rage that he was usually turning on me, and he had turned it on. He turned it on HR. He he, would, he actually stood up and really fought for me. Actually. Oh, nice. Um, and I saw he's just he's just angry at everybody. <laughs> uh, but that's it. He's, you know, he's tough on me, but he's looking after me. Right. Yeah. And, that would be the essence of it. Right. And that's the thing. He actually feels personally responsible for me. I'm his junior, and I, I actually I got I got kind of you know lump in the throat. I got, it was and, and that's the whole thing. It's this relationship that yeah, it's tough, but they're literally it's almost like a parent child well, relationship. It's a deep human relationship, and yeah. I think that's maybe the thing that we should end with here is to remember that it's it's just not some perfunctory thing. Mm-hmm. It's really a deep connection that you have to have. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the awesome thing about it, uh, yeah, is that you have these deep relationships right. to trust from. Exactly. Uh, okay, that's that's awesome. Thank you okay. <laughs> for watching the clock. Uh, we got way much more stuff, and we're gonna get as much of it as okay. possible in. So hang around for the same time next week. Okay. More joy of Japanese business with Rochelle Cop. Hang around, peace. Mm-hmm.